Hi everyone, welcome to our speed dating night. So glad you could join us. Gentlemen, don't forget, those labels that are sitting on your table are for you to write an interesting little tidbit of information about yourself as a conversation starter. Have fun, guys. Spencer, I'm your man to rock. Sensitive. I'm looking for someone who will cry when I cry, and so I still can cry together. Next. Family man? I'm so excited! I'm kind of looking for like a baby daddy slash sugar daddy. What do you do? Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, can you make, wait, do you live alone? It's okay, we can make it work. Baby, say hello to your new daddy. Say hi, daddy. Hi, daddy. Hi, daddy. Not your dad. Entrepreneur? Yeah, I heard that before. Hey, I do deals. I involve animals. Not happening. Wait, why is your label blank? I don't know. How would you label me? How would you label me? Uh, well, hopefully you would label me father, uh, pastor, um, I'm a new hunter, I am a boater, if you know me at all, I, I, I'm a boater. Um, how would you label yourself? If you could think of, just think of three words to describe you, you know, what, what words come to mind? Oops, sorry about that. Um, you know, if you're if you're me and you're kind of looking at appearance, you might label uh, you know think tall, dark, and handsome. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe you think of your hobby. Uh, if you want to label yourself, you're a knitter, or you're a you know a hunter, or you're a sports fan, or you think of your personality, you're outgoing, or you're kind of shy, or you're adventurous, something like that. Uh, or maybe you think of something a little bit deeper. You're you're successful, or or maybe you're a failure, or maybe you see yourself as uh, you know really outgoing, or maybe you see yourself as as really weak and insecure. Like it or not, we are described by labels, and uh, sometimes they're great labels, but sometimes they're they're really hurtful labels. When I was in sixth grade, we were on a field trip, and, you know, just early in the whole puberty thing, I had lots of acting at that point. And uh, this kid, uh, we were standing in line at this pizza place waiting for uh, buffet pizza uh, as a class, and this kid turns around to me and says, why don't you wash your face once in a while? Like, I do, like three or four times a day. Thanks a lot. And then he goes, well, you look like a pizza face. That didn't, that didn't feel too good. Maybe you have a time where someone gave you a name, where they labeled you something that was really, really hurtful. See, the longer we carry a label, the less it describes our past, and unfortunately, the more it can determine our future. If we let our labels, whatever they are, guide us, lead us, if they're a negative label, they can really hurt our life. They can cause us to do destructive things. They can cause us to do harmful things. They can cause us to maybe just not be as, as uh, positive as... We could be. So what if deep down, if you really thought of the main label you carry for yourself, deep down in your own heart and in your own mind, what is the label that, really, uh, that, that you really operate with? I hope it's something positive. I hope it's something like, you know, encouraging or adventurous or successful or happy or something like that. But I think for a lot of people, it's a negative label that we really hold on to. It might be that, that you're insecure, or that you're unsuccessful, or you're unloving, or you're unwanted, or, or insecure. What is that label that you have deep, deep?
deep down. See, labels drive us. Um, research says that if a teacher labels a student as slow, their academics are actually going to go down. They're going to get even worse at grades if they're labeled slow. But if they're labeled, if a student is labeled advanced, they actually do better, no matter what their abilities are. They do better at school if they're labeled advanced. So labels guide us, they lead us, sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse. If you see yourself as a failure, you are going to not try new things. If you see yourself as weak, you're not going to require respect from other people. If you see yourself as unloved, you're going to look for love in harmful, destructive places. We heard a man in our text today uh, who had a label, the paralyzed man, in Mark chapter 2. Now this paralyzed man didn't just have the label of paralyzed, but he had some other labels during the time of Jesus that also would have been unemployed, certainly. He also would have had the label of a burden, no social security, no uh, uh, disability during that time, so he was a burden to others. And also he would have been labeled a sinner, because at that time people believed that if you had a disability, it was because of your sin or because of your parents' sin, something major you did, something really horrible in your past that caused you to have this disability. So our friend the paralyzed man isn't uh, named in the Bible. Let's call him Larry. Does that sound good? Call him Larry. And so uh, Larry fortunately did have a few friends and they knew of this miracle worker, this guy named Jesus. And Jesus was in town and he was, he was at someone's house teaching and preaching and they knew he could do miracles and that he could heal. So they wanted to take Larry, the paralyzed guy, to Jesus. But the house was packed. It was full of people. And so how do they get Larry to Jesus? Of course, they take through the roof. Isn't that what you would do? Well, during that time, roofs were made of thatched, thatched uh, through mud and hay and different things like that, straw. And so they were able to dig through the roof and lower him down to Jesus. Look at what Mark 2, 5 says. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. The faith of those around you matters. Seeing their faith, seeing his, the paralyzed man's friend's faith, they were motivated to do something. It was, Larry was lucky that he had friends that could take them to Jesus and help him and support him. Your friends will carry you toward Jesus or they will pull you away from him. What are your friends doing? Your family doing? Are they taking you towards Jesus or are they pulling you away from Jesus? This is not a Christian TV show per se, but how many of you are watching This Is Us? A really popular show right now? Nobody. Okay, like four or five people? Okay, excellent. So, This Is Us, um, this TV show I didn't see this week, so I'm sorry, I don't know exactly what happened, but last week, um, Katie struggles with a lady. She's a overweight person and I can say that because she says that and she talks about it a lot on the show and last week uh, she and her boyfriend Toby decided to uh, get married but she quickly said let's just get married in in the courthouse because she didn't want the embarrassment the struggle of going to a, a bridal shop and choosing a beautiful dress and having them saying, yeah, that one's not going to quite work on you. 
She didn't want that. But she had a boyfriend, Toby, who believed in her, who loved her, didn't exactly take her to Jesus, but encouraged her, lifted her up, and said, Honey, if you want a big wedding, deep down, if that's what you really want, we're going to have that. In a sense, we're going to face those fears, and we're going to not let that fear, that label of overweight, dictate your future, dictate your plans right now. How are your labels impacting your life, your choices, those negative labels we have in our head? See, transformation rarely happens in isolation, but it happens in community. Addicts know this. If someone's addicted to alcohol, addicted to drugs, addicted to pornography, they very rarely, very, very rarely conquer that addiction on their own. They need friends. They need other people. That's why we have AA. That's why some churches have Celebrate Recovery, because they need other people to conquer that label, to conquer that sin, to conquer that addiction. Larry's friends brought him to Jesus. Let's look at that verse again, verse 5. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. What sins? He's a paralyzed man. What could he have done? He lays on the, on the mat and asks for food. Why would Jesus say your sins are forgiven? I think for a couple of reasons. One, he knew what, that's what they believed then, that a person was paralyzed because of their sin. So he makes it clear, this guy's sins are forgiven. He also said that because he knew what the religious leaders would say. He knew that they would be surprised if he said, your sins are forgiven, because only God could do that. See, every single time Jesus did a miracle, whether he walked on water, whether he healed the blind, whether he healed the lame, whether he uh, cured the paralyzed man, every single time Jesus did a miracle, he did it for one purpose. And that was to point, to show that he was God, to show that he was the Messiah, to show that he was the anointed one, the Savior, God in human flesh. That's why God did, Jesus did miracles. He did not cure every single person on the earth at that time. His goal was not to cure everyone of their physical ailments. His goal was to cure them of their sin. See, Jesus heals the source, not the symptoms of our sickness. We all have a label. We're labeled sinners. But you know what? Because of Jesus and his death and resurrection, we also have a label that we are saints in the eyes of God. See, sin condemns us. It condemns us in our own hearts and in our own minds. I won't have you raise your hand, but many of us struggle with labels in our own head that, that uh, entrap us, that burden us, that drag us down. That sin and the enemy speaking horrible thoughts in your mind. And then we have the world that puts other labels on us that aren't very helpful. So we need freedom not just from a certain label, but we need freedom from the sinfulness within us and the sin around us that causes us to be labeled some very hurtful labels. Jesus comes and says, your sins are forgiven. One last time, looking at that verse, seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. My child. Some of you came in the room today and you said, Boy, I hope ne nobody ever finds out who the real me is. I hope nobody ever figures out the things I have in my heart the things I hide, the secrets that I carry. I hope no one ever really finds that out. 
I'm convinced every single week in worship there are people, and maybe it's you, that say, I'm not sure I believe all this Bible stuff. I'm not even completely convinced that Jesus really died and rose again for me. I'm not sure about everything that pastor says. That's okay. That's all right. God loves you. I'm sure the paralyzed man wasn't so convinced, didn't believe everything his friend, their friend said, his friend said about the, the healer until he was healed. Jesus says, my child, your sins are forgiven. Jesus calls you child of God, his child. A label may describe you, but your identity in Christ defines you. Paul said to the Galatians, there is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are one in Christ. And the previous verse says you are a child of God, robed in his righteousness. You are a child of God. Last week, after 8 o'clock worship, an older guy came up to me and said, so you're a star belt. It was his first time to our church. And I said, yes, I am a star belt. He said, wow, that's really cool. I grew up next to some star belts. I'm like, oh, really? And I said, I probably know them. There's not that many star belts in the world. And uh, he said, do you know Bev star belt? I said, yep, that's, that's my aunt. That was my aunt. She passed away a few months ago. He's like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you know Junior star belt? <laughs> I kind of laughed. I said, yeah, that's, that's my dad. Well, that was my dad, sort of. His name is Lorenz Herman Starfeld, Jr. And everybody called him Jr. when he was little, when he was a kid. Actually, my dad didn't even know his name was Lorenz until ninth grade, when he went to Wilson Junior High School, and the teacher said, Lorenz Starfeld. Looked around like, I guess that's me, because his mom registered him as Junior Starfelt at the Lutheran school. Kindergarten through eighth grade, he was Junior. That, he thought that was his name, at least that's what he tells me, Junior Starfelt. So I, I told this guy, yeah, that's my dad. He's like, well, they used to babysit for me way back when I was a kid. See, I am the child, the son of Lorenz Herman Starfelt Jr. And I am the grandson of Lorenz Herman Starfelt. And they named me Chad Joseph Starfelt, which I have no idea how that connects with anything. But I am the son of Lorenz Herman Starfelt. It matters who you are the son and the daughter of. You are the son, you are the daughter of the Most High God. You are a child of God, and he loves you. And that is the most important label that you have. Let's see what else Jesus says in Mark 10. So, I will prove to you, the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins, he says. And Jesus returned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. Awesome. So the guy was healed. He walked out. He praised God. He told everybody, Jesus healed me. And he praised the Lord and honored him. But you know what? I think some people probably said, Wasn't that the paralyzed guy? Wasn't he the one that was always begging for food and for money laying outside on that mat? See, he still had that label, the paralyzed guy, at least for a long time. Some of us have labels that we have a hard time getting rid of, that we want to get rid of. We want to move beyond, but, but we struggle. It's kind of like when you have a name tag on your shirt and you forget to take it off and you put it in the washing machine, right? And then, and then you still don't see it, you put it in the dryer, and then you pull it out like, ah, man, you got this gluey goo stuff there, it's half ripped off, it's still sticking on your shirt, it sticks, 
and it's hard to get rid of. That's some of us. Don't let that label rule you. The paralyzed man was probably still called the paralyzed man, but the Bible says he went out praising the Lord. He was focused on making sure everybody knew what he did, what God did for him. There's a lady in the Old Testament named Rahab, and she's mentioned eight times in the Bible. In six of those times, it says Rahab the prostitute. How would you like to be her? But she didn't live up to that title. She said, I have more that God wants to do through me than be a prostitute. So she helped the Israelites go into the promised land and conquer Jericho. God used her mightily. She's even in the line of Jesus shared in the genealogy. A prostitute. Someone with that kind of label God used in a mighty and powerful way. See, what the devil might want for evil, God will use for good. The devil wanted Larry to uh, be convinced he was worthless and wanted the devil wanted those who saw him to believe that he was a horrible sinner and that they were condemned as well. See, the devil wanted Rahab to be convinced that she was worthless and she could do nothing good, but that's not what she believed. She heard a much better message from the God of the world. And God, the devil wants to convince you that you are worthless and that you are weak. But God has a much better message for you. See, God can use your past to change someone's future as he did with Rahab, as he did with Larry, as he has with you and with me. So you might have walked in today and one of those three words that you thought of at the beginning, you might have thought, I used to be called insecure. But you can walk out today knowing that you are now called secure because of Jesus Christ. You maybe thought, I used to be called unloved. But you can walk out today knowing you are loved because of Jesus Christ. You might maybe even thought in the past you were thought of as a mistake. But today you can walk out knowing you are chosen child of God through Jesus Christ. Maybe you walked in and thought, I'm an addict. But you can walk out today knowing you are free. Because of Jesus Christ. So you don't know this about me, but um, I stand up here, look like a really confident preacher and not afraid of all these people in front of me. You know, speaking is the number one fear of all Americans, standing in front of a bunch of people. But in fourth and fifth and sixth grade, I struggled with reading so much that I wasn't in the advanced reading class. I wasn't in the normal kids reading class. I wasn't in, even in the slow kids reading class. I was in the special ed group, which was me and the special ed teacher. See, I had to go out of class every single day for an hour and go meet with the special education teacher because I was so bad at reading comprehension and I needed to get extra help. But somehow, in some way, you know, I thought during that time, I certainly thought in my own head, I'm pretty dumb. I gotta go out to some special teacher. I can't even be in the slow kids reading class. And I probably had other kids that called me dumb. But I heard a different message at church. I heard the message, you are a child of God. You are valuable, you are chosen, you are loved. And you have enemies in your head, in your mind, that try to convince you you are worthless, you are unvaluable, you are unloved, you are unsuccessful, and that nobody cares. And those are lies from the devil. 
I pray that you will not listen to those voices, but you will listen to the voice of God that says you are loved, you are valuable, you are chosen, you are His. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords says, you are mine. You are my child. So what were those three words you thought of when you came in? At the beginning of the message, three words that described you? If any single one of those words was a negative word, I encourage you to replace that word with these three words. Child of Your labels may describe the past, but you will overcome because your identity in Christ defines your future. Let's pray together. Lord God, thanks for your love for us, your mercy for us. I pray that we would live listening to your voice, listening to your label for us, child of God. You used a paralyzed man. You used a prostitute to be part of your kingdom, part of your work on earth. I give you thanks that you can use people like us as well. And Lord, as that voice in our head tries to convince us of, of horrible labels, unhelpful labels, negative labels in our head, I pray that we wouldn't live up to those, but that we would hear your voice. It says we are valuable, we are chosen, we are your children. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy for each one of us. In Jesus' name. We continue now with our...